All right. Thank you all for coming here. Governor Justice, it is an honor to have you here for this ribbon cutting. You may not know this, but under your leadership, this is our ninth move. And getting awareness out to our veterans has been phenomenal with these with moves like this. And we couldn't have done it without your without your leadership and your support. And with, uh, and with that, Governor. Welcome. Oh, thank y'all so much. And uh, I hate like crazy. You've been waiting on me. It. Uh, if I could just tell you this real quick. Just a little while ago, we were my <clears throat> trooper. That is our captain, Captain Pendleton, and I. We were getting on the plane in Lewisburg to fly to Petersburg and then go to the quarter, quarter H announcement and then come here. And it seemed so simple. And it was about 9.35 in the morning or 9.40. So all of a sudden the pilots looked at me and said, Governor, we're, we're leaking fuel out of one of the wings and we can't fly. And it would have been the sensible thing probably to have said, we can't make it. There's just no way. But you see, my dad would have been the fellow that uh, leaped across the desk and grabbed me by my shirt at one time when I was saying, Dad, there wasn't anything I could do. And the next thing I knew, I was flying through the air as he slammed me down on the desk and said, damn you, there's always something you can do and you better damn well always remember that. Now, like it or not like it, that's how I've lived my life. And, uh, and so I said, okay, let's go. And so we drove. Now I passed by here, probably going well in excess of the speed limit, heading that way. And, and uh, <laughs> I see a couple of the officers saying, yeah, that's right. He, he was well in excess of the speed limit, but uh, but I had in front of me, you know, a true for the day's lights on, and it just so happened that somewhere along the way back here, and I don't know where the trooper is, but he joined us because he probably thought we were coming here as we were going by. And it was it you, sir? And so I appreciate him being behind us. And so, but we've made it. And, and it's a glorious day in West Virginia, and it's an incredible, incredible, beautiful town that we have here and the great people here. But let me just tell you just this. These folks right here and probably many others, this is unbelievably important to them. And it's unbelievably important to me and many, many, many others that are right here. Because I believe this with all my soul. We owe everything we have to them. Everything. Everything we have in this world, we owe to those people that stepped up to give us the freedoms and the abilities and the rights and the chance to do everything we do every day. Every single day. Now, I believe that. And I don't really care if you believe that or not, or, or that you believe that I believe it. Because my dad would have always said so many times, if the good Lord knows and you know, son, that's all that really matters. And that's right. Absolutely, though, our active military, our veterans that stepped up, we owe them. We owe them. And so with that being said, you know, we have had to the great success of relocating or opening or whatever, nine different facilities since I rolled in as your governor. You see, we hadn't really done much, really and truly, since maybe 1945. Maybe a couple relocations and whatever like that, but really not much. For God's sakes of living, we owe them. I mean, it's just that simple. I mean, literally, when it really boils right down to it, I can say everything in the world to you, and I can say, we did, we did, we did, we did. Bull feathers. They did. They did for all of us. 
And we should always remember that. You know, let me tell you just this too. Just a couple days ago, I was at a funeral of a great state state trooper that somebody just ambushed and just murdered him. That's all there is to it. 37 years old. There was his son, Finnegan, his daughter, Zoe, Zoe, you know, a beautiful young wife, you know, mom and dad that were just grieving so much it was unbelievable. And it's exactly the same thing. We owe them. We owe them. I mean, that's, uh, that's just all there is to it. They run to the fire. They provide us with our freedoms. They give us everything. This office, with their other offices around the state, now just imagine this. They're going to facilitate and dispense there's $2.77 billion dollars that go throughout our veteran community every year. Is that not correct? Now imagine what that means to all of us in every way. They spend money at our businesses and whatever, and they go to McDonald's and they go to Wendy's and wherever it may be. What does all that mean to us? But if we're not willing to help them, to facilitate and make life better for them, then my dad would say we're not much. So it's a real honor for me to be here, and I really appreciate you waiting on me and, uh, and it being hot and all that. And uh, the only other p component here that's missing is I know you don't really want to see me. <laughs> You'd a whole lot rather probably see Baby Dog. And so I got her, and I'm going to put her right here beside me, and then we're going to cut the ribbon. And then if any of you want to come up and say hi to Baby Dog and just act like you'd like to say hi to me, I, I know better. But uh, come here, baby. <laughs> now, how about that? She needs you to boost her up. Come on, baby. Now, sit down there. <laughs> She's not real quick. But let me, let me tell you this real quick. I've got to tell you this story real quick. And you've heard it a thousand times. But in all the pandemic, in all the tough stuff, you know, all of a sudden this little bulldog puppy that my son and daughter just handed over my shoulder on Christmas Eve, you know, and how she got her name was our little grandson who was just a baby. He was two years old. He would walk around and she would be walking around through the presents on Christmas Eve. And he would just kept saying, because he didn't know the word puppy, but he said, where'd that baby dog go? And so we named her baby dog. And, it, and, and since that time, the thing that she's done, and I mean this with all my soul, she makes you smile. And then there's absolutely a component that shouldn't be. But the definition of coincidence, 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 an everyday occurrence in which God chooses to remain anonymous, think about that. And literally, she's not supposed to like everybody. But she loves everybody. It doesn't matter if it's kids or adults or black people or white people or whatever or Democrats or Republicans. My God, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. She loves everybody. She even likes my Captain Drew Pendleton, which is really strange, but she does. And uh, with all that being said, you know, it's, uh, it's to me, every time I kept looking at her, I kept thinking, why is the message more complicated than that? Through all this COVID and all the stuff that affected and, and was really tough on everybody, everybody, why is the message any more simple than if all of us could make others smile and all of us loved everybody? Why does it need to, it need to be more complicated than just that? So really and truly, that's her. She's your buddy. But anyway, that's all I got. Thank you, and God bless all of you in every way for all you've done, my gracious sakes, and for all you've given each and every one of us to have a chance. That's all there is to it. God bless you. Thank you.
All right. Okay. Honor uh, a ten foot present arms. Am I gonna put this by myself? This is all you, sir. It's all me. Okay. Here we go. It was unbelievable honor. And I'm doing it with all my soul. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir.